What's going on, Leifi here, and welcome back to yet another Albion online video. Today I'm going to show you another money-making method you can do as a solo player, even if you are pretty new to the game. One of the least known items in the game is Arcane Essence, which are crafting materials that are used to enchant potions. At the Alchemist Lab we can see that we need a bunch of resources to craft any of the potions. And starting from tier 4, we can click on the enchantment icon and craft enchant potions. As you can see, the only thing that changes about the necessary resources is the addition of arcane essence. Enchanted potions are stronger than their non-enchanted variants, and aside from adding more options in choice, they also are the preferred potion types for high-end PvP. Where the slight disadvantage matters, money does not. So for these players, these enchanted potions are very important, which in turn makes Arcane Essence a very valuable material. These materials start at tier 4 and go all the way up to tier 8. Here you can see the estimated market value of each tier as of making this video. These prices, however, might change based on where you sell them, and of course they might also get affected by time. As you can see, the higher tier materials are far more expensive, and this is because the drop rate on those are far less. These are the current drop rates according to Albion Online 2D. I will link the website in the description below, so if you want to check it out for yourself, that's where you can find it. Aside from using Arcane Essence to enchant potions, you can also transmute them into higher tiers or runes. Transmuting them into a higher tier consumes 10 of the previous tier, which currently isn't worth doing. If you want or need a higher tier, you are better off buying them from the market and selling the lower tiers you have. Transmuting them into runes is even a worse option, as a single arcane essence is worth much more than a rune and you need 20 of these materials to transmute them. So if you are not going to use the arcane essence yourself to make profit with crafting enchanted potions, you definitely want to sell them to other players through the market instead. Now we know everything we need to know about arcane essence, let's take a look at where we can farm them. When you open the world map, you will see that in certain zones you will find these icons. These are the so-called Sepulchre of Magic. When you click on them, you can already see that the creatures in these areas drop essences, which can be used to craft runes and enchant potions. When you click on the zone itself, you can see what it visually looks like and how it will look on your minimap. The Sepulchre of Magic can be found in both the red zone and the black zone. The one we just viewed was one in the red zone, and if we go to one in the black zone, we can see the icon is the same, but if we click on the zone itself, the layout around the icon is different. There are only a couple sepulchre of magic in the red zone, and these have bigger layouts and more mobs, but because it's relatively safer to farm them in the red zone, you will find more people doing it, whereas in the black zone the area is smaller and there are less mobs, but you have much more farming areas and these tend to be less contested. The mobs on the Sepulchre of Magic platforms are Spectres, and you have two versions of them. The smaller ones, which are the Feeble Spectres, and the bigger ones, which are the regular Spectres. According to Albion Online 2D, the regular Spectres, which are the bigger ones, have double the drop rate. From my personal experience, that seems about right. There definitely is a noticeable difference in drop rate. What's cool about the drops, however, is that a single mob can drop multiple materials. Something interesting about these mobs is that all of them are tier 6 throughout the world of Albion. So whatever tier zone you farm in, the mobs are all the same and all of them can drop all tiers of arcane essence. These mobs also have a 10 minute respawn timer, meaning you will have some downtime after clearing them. I recommend you keep yourself busy whilst you wait for them to respawn. For example, you could take some solo dungeon maps with you and do them in between. This way you make even more profit and progress and make the best use of your time. Some other things you could do are kill mobs for cubs, hunt treasures, kill mob camps, jump in the roads of Avalon and maybe even gather if you bring your tools with you. I just don't recommend you to actively wait for them to respawn as you will lose a lot of your valuable time waiting. 
Now the regular specters are a bit stronger than the feeble specters, nonetheless both these mobs are very easy to kill. Therefore you don't need crazy levels of gear and you can even go in a lower tier set such as a 4.2. I do recommend you take a weapon with AoE abilities and low cooldowns. You can easily group the mobs together and kill them in one go. And since you will be jumping from pack to pack, having low cooldowns speeds things up. Don't pull too many mobs however as they will reset and it's better to stay near full health since you will be farming in the red and black zone. Since you are susceptible to gankers, having defenses and escape is pretty important. You can easily build these in your loadout through your armors, cape and potions. You don't need any offensive abilities on these parts since the mobs die easily and the damage from your weapon will be enough for that. And perhaps you can even go for a weapon with mobility on it to add to your escape potential. To keep your health up as much as possible, I also recommend you take food with sustain. Arcane Essence weighs very little, therefore you don't need an expensive bag. On the other hand, to increase your chances of escaping from gankers, the better your mount is, the better your chances. A bit of personal advice that could help you out is that you can go for a PvP set instead of an escape set, but in the red and black zone you never really know how many people will be there, therefore an escape set is the safer choice. What I personally do is kill a pack with my mount next to me, so that if I sense any danger, I just mount up and confirm right away. The difference in having to mount could be all the difference in whether you get to live. This does slow things down a little, since you have a global cooldown every time you dismount, but it adds to safety. Also, check out if there are any banks near the place you farm, and there might even be one in the same zone. Make sure to stash your gains from time to time, so that even if you die, you don't lose everything you farmed. Videos like these always increase the activity for a short period, so don't be surprised if you run into a lot of people in the following days. But in a week or so, things should go back to normal, which makes this a very viable farming method for anyone that wishes to benefit from it. I wish you good luck in farming and hope you get some good crops from these specters. Hit that like for increased RNG and I'll see you next time.